15 minutes or so. Got another load. It's 10.45 and we got 10 yards. Now, technically the drum holds 11 yards, but it's really easy to spill. So this company doesn't really load 11 yards very much. If ever, the most I've had is 10 and a half over here. Over on the other side in Tacoma, we ran 11 yards all the time. A lot of people don't realize the back of the drum on the cement trucks is open. So if you're going up a hill and you have really wet concrete or you accidentally pop your clutch coming off a red light or something, you'll spill out the back. It'll just slosh out like a water bottle with no lid on it. So anyway, just so that doesn't happen, we only load 10 yards, 10 and a half at the most. Going up little hills, you gotta speed your drum up. Because the inside of the drum, it's like a, it has big fins, giant fins in the shape of a corkscrew. So if the drum spins one direction, it pushes everything forward like a corkscrew. And if you want everything to come out the back, you just spin the drum the other direction and it pushes everything out. So when you're going up a hill, you spin your drum faster and it pushes all that wet concrete forward more. So it doesn't have a chance to leak out the back. One of the things I like about driving a cement truck is that you don't have a set schedule, like a route. I've had a couple jobs where I've had a route, you know, a certain amount of stops I need to make every day and it, I don't really like it, <laughs> you know, because if you start falling behind and then your whole day you're trying to play catch up, it's just a lot of, a lot more stress. So I like driving a cement truck because every delivery is, is on its own. You get one delivery, you go back to the yard and see if they got anything else. You sort of have to be okay with a certain level of, uh, you know, fluctuation. Your hours are pretty unpredictable. But at least you don't have to worry about falling behind schedule all day and it's it's uh it's enough repetition where you can get good at it and it doesn't require you know a whole lot of thought and effort after a while you know what you're doing there's enough repetition where you know what you're doing and you get comfortable with it but it's different enough where you're always going different places, different, different situations, that it keeps it interesting. It doesn't get so monotonous, you're doing the same thing every day, day in and day out. Where you're always going somewhere different. And you get to know the contractors that use your company a lot and sort of build relationships with them, so it's kind of nice. We are the second load, and 
and they're probably doing based on the the concrete mix and how wet they want it I'd say we're doing something like a garage or a driveway something flat Usually if contractors are doing something flat, like a garage, driveway, sidewalk, a slab of some kind, usually they want it pretty wet. Let's see if we're gonna back in or what are we doing? Oh, it looks like a sidewalk. That's easy. Sidewalks are probably the easiest gig. Because you don't have to turn and move around very much, you just let the contractor do their thing and an inch forward a little bit at a time. So I'm going to have to turn around, I need to lift up my pushers and my boosters. The pushers are the extra axles in the middle. There's two extra axles in the middle, and the boosters are the extra ones in back. Basically, the heavier you are, the more axles need to be on the ground. Legally, you're only allowed a certain amount of weight per axle. So if you're fully loaded, you need to put all your extra axles down. of the way they work they move with the truck when you turn you can't turn them yourself they don't steer but they move when you turn and uh, if you try to back up with your boosters or your pushers down you'll snap an axle off because they don't they don't work going backwards it's not the same so it looks like the other truck, his drum's not turning, which means he's not spitting out concrete. So he's probably got a, a little bit left at least. So we'll get the truck ready. I'll hang some chutes and uh, put some water in if I need to. And then we'll get going when that truck's empty. Pressurize the water tank. Unlock it, unlock it. Now yeah, I'll go this way since I'm in the road. I wanna be able to see it from my mirrors so I don't run into something. Check the slump. It's a little dry, I'll put some water in. This is the slump meter. 
down here and I have one outside too that I was looking at. A slump is how you measure the consistency of concrete, the wetness. You measure it in inches. So basically the bigger the number, the wetter the concrete. How they do it is uh, picture like you're building a sand castle and you put a cone on the ground, something flat, and you fill it with concrete like you're building a sand castle. You fill it from the top and then you take the cone away and you measure how many inches the concrete slumps down. So if you take the cone away and it slumps down one inch from where it started, that's a one inch slump basically sand really dry if it slumps down six inches that's a six inch slump that's pretty wet it's like a milkshake it flows usually when you're doing a curb or a foundation or somewhere where there's a lot of gaps in the in the forms you'll use a around a four inch slump normally if you're doing something flat like a sidewalk or driveway Usually it's a, at least a six, a six inch slump where it flows and it's easier for the contractors to work with it. Looks like he's almost out. His drum's spinning pretty quick. So we'll probably be ready to go here in just a minute.
quite a bit left. Normally, we don't have that much left over. Normally, it's a yard or less. When I say yard, it's a cubic yard. So, three feet by three feet by three feet worth of concrete. Normally, we don't have very much left over, but these guys, uh, I guess their boss just ordered a little too much. <laughs> quite a bit, actually. But it happens. So we'll take it back to the yard and dump it out, recycle it, or fill up molds for eco blocks. You know those big concrete blocks that you see in parking lots a lot? That's usually just leftover concrete. So we did the uh, did what we needed to do at the job site and I washed down the truck, got, got off as much of the splatter and extra concrete as I could. That's all you can do. We'll hop back on the freeway, straight shot back to the yard. It's still sort of early enough, it's 1245, so I'm expecting to get another load today, but we'll see what happens.